Hello and good morning. It is February 8th and I'm glad that you're joining me for whatever time of day it is that you are actually watching this video. And we are still in Acts and we are reading Acts chapter 12 today and I would love for you to join me for some of my thoughts on it because in this section you see two very distinct things but still two very cool things that take place. You get Peter's miraculous escape from prison. At this point in time, he's been arrested for his preaching and telling of the gospel of the good news of Jesus and what he's done for all people by Herod. And while he's in prison, thinking that he's going to die, he gets to escape from prison because God said he wasn't done with him yet. And that's such a cool thing because you see that God cares so deeply about his people and that what they're going to do is um, for his kingdom will happen no matter what. Because later in the chapter, you see that Herod dies after he was trying to stop the spread of the news of Jesus and what takes place. And you see that God will make sure that his, that his word is spread through all people of all nations no matter what, and nothing is going to stand in the way of the gospel being spread. And so that's such a cool thing to keep in mind that as you go throughout your day, that as you go into places that you might not normally um, go into, that as you continue to spread the gospel with your coworkers, your friends, your family members, your relatives, whoever it may be, God will be with you and nothing will stop the spread of the gospel. It may seem like there's stops and halts at points, but the gospel will always be spread. And so your next step is I challenge you to um, have faith that when you go out into the world that nothing is going to stop you the same way that nothing stopped God from protecting Peter as he continued to spread the word. And if you don't have time to join us today, that's okay, but I would love for you to join us in reading this um, chapter of Acts. So let us read together. It was this time that King Herod arrested some, some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this was met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that the what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. They had walked the length of one street. Suddenly, the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came and answered the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said it must be his angel. But Peter kept knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said, and then he left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Then Herod went from Judea and Caesarea and stayed there. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon, 
and they now joined together and sought an audience with him. After securing the support of Blastus and trusted personal servants of the king, they asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, um, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a god, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. Church, thank you for, for joining me today for um, this section of the daily reading, but until next time. You are sent.